So this is a really stunning looking printer. Just looking at it gives you a feeling of very high quality and just a thought through design and engineering. So if you're a person that really likes high end quality things, this is definitely for you. Now the first thing that really stands out is, is this really small build size here. Probably not enough for most people. So if you're gonna get a three in one snap maker, I would definitely try to stretch for the mid model and you'll be able to do a lot more things with that printer. But with that said, this size here is very compact and can fit anywhere on a desktop. So if you're doing small things for your project, Projects, then this obviously is perfect. So we got a really clean and a nice design, very modern. The color of all the metal is kind of like a space gray. Everything runs on the lead screws, so that should give us excellent precision. We have a heated bed. Our control screen is removable and can be held like this and operated without always trying to bend down. So that's really cool. And the way it attaches is quite unique too, magnetically. There's a screen protector, let's go ahead and take that off. So a very nice screen and just a clean look. So wiring is managed quite well. There's not too many wires everywhere. So we got a really interesting control panel here that mounts on the back and it's really out of the way and just looks really cool. Our on and off switch is right here and this is where we're gonna connect our power cable. So if you wanna connect straight to the computer, you can do that through this USB port. And we also have the normal USB port for inserting the thumb drive. And not to mention the quite unique looking spool holder and we do get the three in one capabilities, which makes this machine a very unique and versatile tool. And changing the tools is not very difficult. All you do is unplug from the top, and then you got four bolts to take out from the back and then install the new module and plug it in. For the build plate, you would do the same thing. There are four knobs underneath that you just unscrew and then you replace it with this one. And the reason you would need this plate is because you have mounting holes here that accommodate these brackets which hold down the item that you want to CNC. So this plate here you'd want to change once you're doing the carving. But for lasering obviously you can just go right on top of here. Alright so I went ahead and plugged in the power adapter and we can see it glows a little green light here. So the other end we're going to plug into the printer. It's right over here. Alright so now we got to do is switch the power on. Now push it down and it powers up. So I do hear some fans and there is the fan on the back of the control board and we also have some fans that turn in here. And we can see what our display looks like. So let's go ahead and pull it off here. So very nice quality. On the top we have the nozzle temperature and then the heated bed. For some reason it says NA at the moment. I'm not sure why that is but we'll figure it out. Looks like progress bar. Stop files, controls and settings. So let's go in the control and click on home axes and see if all the axes work. So let's go ahead and click that and there it goes. Alright so the X and the Y seem to work and now the Z is coming down and that works also. So let's go ahead and see if we can level the bed. So we're gonna click on settings and we have calibration, frequently asked questions and about. On about we have about the printer, FAQs is a QR code and calibration. All right, so it looks like it's homing. Okay, and so we have a menu that comes up, four corners of the bed. And on the very bottom here we can see up and down and this is how we're gonna bring it up and down according to which parameter we use. And it goes quite fine with 0 0.05 millimeters. So let's go ahead and grab the little cards here that are included. So on the back of this card there's a little diagram here that shows where each port connects. So that's cool. So if you don't have to have your manual out to reassemble it, you can just have this card with it. And this is a really thin sheet of paper that is a calibration card. And it's quite thin so they want you to get quite close. So one side is for 3D printing and CNC. And the other one is actually for a laser. It has a little dot where you can focus the laser in order to get a precise beam. All right, so I'm gonna click on one here and it's gonna to move to our first corner. We're gonna grab our little card and set it right between the nozzle and the bed. And as we can see, it's way off right now. It's much higher than it needs to be. So we're gonna choose the 0.5 and we're gonna start coming down pretty quick. So once we get pretty close, I'm gonna to move to 0.2, start coming down a little easier or in smaller increments. Put our card under there. So now we're really close, I'm going to go to 0.5, start coming down, and then we're going to check it as we're coming down. Okay, grabbed it. Perfect right there. Now we're going to go to corner two. So again, it starts off really high. And there we go, looks like that's it right there. So now we're going to go to the third corner, 
and do the same thing here and our last corner all right that should be good right there now once we get all the four corners done we're going to click on save up here and that's going to save everything and remember the distances in between so let's go ahead and try to preheat the nozzle we're going to go controls change filament and confirm Okay, so it looks like it's warming up. Now, I don't see anywhere on here to control the bed temperatures. I guess we'll see how that works. So while that's preheating, let's go ahead and grab our thumb drive. And on the side of the printer, we're gonna plug it in to the control board. So it looks like we're up to temperature. And you can add it and subtract it right here if you want it more or less. So let's go ahead and grab our filament. I really like this roll, we're very nice looking. And so we're simply just gonna put it here on the spool holder. Now the part that's kind of ironically weird is that the spool holder is actually not in the direction it needs to be <laughs> towards the head. Kind of an interesting design. It should be sitting like this, not like this. So maybe we have to unspool it this way. A little bit strange for sure. But in any case, here on top of the tool head, we can see there's a little hole and this is where the filament is going to go in. And then we're going to push this button to release the arm inside and we're going to push the filament all the way down. And we can see it's coming right out, purging. So that part is quite simple and easy, but the spool holder here still doesn't make any sense. Maybe if we go down, kind of counterintuitive, but be a little more controlled here. All right, so the filament is ready to go. I think we can go ahead and see if we can read those files off of that thumb drive. And sure enough, we can see that the files tab is available now. So let's go ahead and click on that. And there is nothing in here, interestingly enough. So I guess they didn't include any kind of test files. So let's go ahead and jump to the computer and see if we can download the SnapMaker software. All right, so here we are at the computer and I went to the SnapMaker website and downloaded the software, which is called Luban, I guess. And they do have Windows and Mac versions. So I downloaded the Mac and the installation process was very easy. So let's go ahead and open it up. And this is what it looks like. So over here we can see it says original. This is the one we have and you can choose from the different many kinds they have. And so on the top left here, we can see we have our main functions, which right now we're in 3D printing. This is this button. And then here we have laser and then we have C and C. So let's start with the 3D printing. And this very one on the top is when you connect to your computer, you can actually control the printer from your computer in this dashboard here. So I never used this slicer, but it looks pretty straightforward. Let's grab a file. I got this benchy here and you can see we just drag it in and it shows up. So here you guys can see we can move it around. We have some hot buttons here that we can do a few things we can also scale it make it larger or smaller and uh, rotate it so pretty basic stuff but pretty much all you need now the more important things are going to be on this side on the right and this is where we're going to choose our material pla or abs the diameter then we got some standard settings here which are all fine but more importantly we're going to go to printing settings and here we can really adjust a little better how we want to print so we can do recommended or customized under customized you can go through every option here and kind of you know choose more precisely but under recommended it's quite simple fast print normal print and then high quality so and that adjusts is the travel speeds the outer walls speeds and things like that so I'm going to use the normal quality mode and as simple as that now we can just click this generate G code and if I do that it's gonna slice it we can see it here on the bottom and here we can see all of the different layers and we actually can scroll through them on this bar here so all the different colors indicate these different things now we also have travel that's not clicked if we click that we'll be able to see where the nozzle travels but yeah, it seems like a pretty easy and straightforward to use slicer. So once you're done slicing it, what you're going to do is we're going to export the G code to file. So this button all the way in the bottom. And that's just going to ask us where we want to save it. We'll just say desktop and it's going to create that file. And so this is the G code file that we can transfer now to the thumb drive and then plug it into the back to print. Now, if we click on this load G code to workspace, that's going to take us to the dashboard on the very top here where we're connected to the printer and we can push the print from our computer straight to the printer without, you know, having to use the thumb drive or move files around or anything like that. You can just print straight from here and we can see here we have this file ready to go. All right. So now that we made the G code file, we can go to files and we can see it right here. It says 3D Benchy. So let's click on it and we'll click start. And so our nozzle's heating up, but our heated bed is not available for some reason. So I'm not sure if maybe some connectors are not working or what, but so it does preheat pretty fast on the nozzle. So believe it or not, guys, even though on our heated bed it says NA, I can feel that it's hot still. So it is heating up, 
but it hasn't registered on the screen so maybe the thermostat on it doesn't work so it's been over five minutes and nothing has happened and the bed is super hot i think it just keeps heating it but it doesn't know when to stop so i'm gonna go ahead and turn it off i want to see if i can figure out what's going on so after fiddling around with it just for a second it just started working so i think i just had a bad connection there on the wire so I'm going to keep a close eye on it and make sure everything's okay. But it is working now. We're having a reading on the bed. So let's go back to files and start this benchy again. So you guys can see we're heating up. And the bed is going all the way to 70. All right. So we should be starting here in a second. And there it goes. And our level looks perfect. Look at that. So yeah, the leveling system works great. All right, so it looks like we've started and our bench is printing. And the stepper motors are definitely heard. I'm gonna bring my microphone in so you guys can hear it. So there's definitely stepper motor sounds and you know they're quite pronounced so this is not a silent driver here. Alright so I'm just going to let this thing print out and uh, we'll see what comes out. Alright our first print is done. It looks like the screen just kind of goes black and says tap to activate. So it took 2 hours and 32 minutes to print this benchy. It looks like our heated bed is working just fine. So let's see how easy it is to take the benchy off. Okay so it popped right off. All right, cool. So this looks like a pretty good build material here. So because this is white filament, it'll be a little bit hard to see. But if we look at the reflections, we can see the layers are sitting really good. There is a vibration in the print, kind of. You kind of see the pattern, I guess, maybe. And over here we had, looks like, a little bit of issue. And also there's a pretty pronounced line here. So it didn't turn out perfect, but overall not too bad. And also we have something strange here going on on the top. That might have something to do with the way the filament is fed into the extruder. Because it's kind of going in sideways. But yeah, overall pretty decent. Now we do have some stringing. And that probably can be adjusted in the slicer. So as far as this first print and this benchy, I would say it's just okay, I guess. Definitely not great. So I'm going to put my own darker filament and slice a couple other things and we'll print those out. And then after that, I do want to try the laser. All right, so I printed out a couple more models with a black silky filament where we can see a lot better of the finish and the overall quality. So let's look at this Benchy. So we can see here that it's much better than we initially thought on the white filament. So the layers are sitting very well. We do have some ghosting here. We can see around here and that's the X axis. We still have this weird thing in the front here. Not sure what that's about. And the bed's holding the print very well. And there's no issues there. So yeah, I would say for overall average printing, it does quite well. And there we go, it comes off quite easy. So let's look at the X first, and we can see there's a bit of ghosting there. And there's some kind of interesting pattern in the print. Here's our Y. So the Y doesn't seem to have any ghosting. The interesting pattern is still in there. This is the X wall and the Y wall. And if we look at the corners, they look great also. So the layers go down really good on this 3D printer. Now, since this machine is not just a 3D printer, we can give it a little bit of slack because of its multi capabilities. So let's go ahead and change out the head module. So we're going to unplug it. Let's flip it around and we're going to just remove the four bolts. And just that simple, our printing head is off. So now we're going to grab the laser head. We're going to line it up the same way and reinstall the four bolts. And so now what we got to do is just plug it in and we have the laser. Theoretically, we should have different controls here. So let's hit on controls. And sure enough, we have a laser CNC on and off. So the set origin is going to position the laser from where it needs to start, which is the middle. Now, before you turn on the laser, you definitely would want to put on these green glasses because these are going to protect you from the wavelengths. Actually, guys, let's go ahead and replace this bed because this is our 3D printing bed. And so that's quite simple. We're just going to take the bolts underneath out and then we're going to unplug it. Technically, we can just unplug that from the printer and move this out of the way for now. And grab our new plate, which doesn't look like it matters, which is top or bottom. And we're going to install it. All right, so that looks good right there. Put this display back in. Let's power it back on. Now we do still need to focus it, obviously, also. And actually, I just realized that there is a little light on right now. It's very faint. You can kind of see it. 
But I think the idea here is to bring it to the center. So try to line it up here, pretty close to the center. So that's about center right there. You guys can probably see that little dot. So what we need to do now is grab this little calibration card and it has a little dot on there. Now before we do adjust this, what you want to do is you want to put your material in first, whatever you're lasering into, and then this card on top as reference. We know we need to go down a bit, so let's go ahead and go down one millimeter at a time. And our point is getting smaller. See if I can give you a better view guys, but yeah, as we go down, the point seems to be getting smaller. So the idea here is to try to make the point as fine as possible. And I think we're getting really close right there. I can see the point getting really sharpened. So I went down quite a bit. So depending on what you're engraving to, you might need to go up and down. Okay, yeah, it's getting really fine now. So and I'm going to keep going here. Okay, it seems like the more I go down, the... Okay, it's getting worse now. I'm going to go back up. So you're just trying to get the sharpest point you can. And I don't know if the camera is going to pick up, but that thing is tiny now. So it's definitely no bigger than this dot on this part, maybe even smaller. So. so on our control panel, we can go ahead, also click set origin because we want it to be set right there as where the starting point will be. So if I turn on the laser right now, it should burn into that cardboard. So let's do a little quick test. Make sure you're wearing your glasses. And there we go. And it's actually cutting. And you guys can see we just did a little engravement right there. All right, cool. So now that we got the laser all set up and ready to go, let's go to our software and make a file to engrave something. Okay, so we're back in the SnapMaker software. So over here we're on 3D printing right now, but let's go ahead and go to a laser engraving. So when we go here, we get this screen. And here we can see this is our platform, which is 120 by 120 here is our working space. So I'm not too familiar with this kind of stuff, but it looks pretty straightforward. Here we have the different functions. And on the top here, we have more controls that we can do. So let's go ahead and just start with some text. So I clicked on the T and got the snap maker. So we'll just work with that. So here we can adjust everything about this text, the configurations. So I just clicked on process in the actions and that looks like it generated the logo for lasering. And we can see how it cut out and made an outline around all the letters. So this is how fast the printer moves. This is how fast it moves when it's actually lasering multi-passes so it goes around twice i guess we'll just leave it everything the way it is so seems pretty straightforward but definitely something to get used to especially if you're new to this stuff because this is kind of a different workflow so let's just click down here where it says generate g-code and if we do that it's going to create the g-code and then we can export it down here to our desktop which we can save and then we'll put it on our thumb drive and take it to the machine now you can also obviously work from the computer like we talked about before through that usb cable and then you just click this load g code to workspace so but yeah as far as how to use everything it looks quite intuitive and also if we look down here all the way on the top here we can see we are in the process section if we go back to the editor we can actually edit this part of it so if we're done with this we can delete it if you go down here on the very bottom there's these little shapes if you click on them here you can load some projects to kind of get started so like this feather here so i might do this and when you're in here and when you're in the editor you can choose the way you do it black and white grayscale vector so you can adjust the image here also you do have quite a few options to get the burn just right and here you can choose the type of burn that it does so it gives you a little preview here right in the middle so you can see exactly what you're going to be getting i feel like with this you know it's a little bit of trial and error depending on what you're engraving but overall it seems to be pretty straightforward all right, so now that we have our file, we can go ahead and engrave it. Now, it's probably a good idea to try to secure this, whatever you're cutting somehow, and that's what these little brackets are for. But because my cardboard here is quite a bit larger, I'm just going to use this little clip here, just so it doesn't move around when it's engraving. The Y-axis will be moving, so there might be vibrations or whatnot else. In. So let's go to Files, and there we can see the code that we made. So we're going to click on that, Start. And there it goes, it just starts right up. And you guys can see the process. Hopefully if the camera is picking it up, it is acting a bit funny, but it seems like it's engraving very nice and precise. And when you do lasering guys, make sure you're in a well ventilated area because you know, there's going to be smoke. And plus you want to be careful about the light itself. All right, and that is it, it's finished. So it took about five minutes, looks like. That's what it says on the display. 
it turned out really good and I'm really happy with how fine it is meaning that you can burn something really fine and get a good result so the focus on the laser seems to be spot on So I went ahead and burnt this feather and it really turned out well. You can tell by all of the details, it's quite amazing. And also we see that the laser is capable of lighter and darker burns. So we got pretty good dynamic range. So this is quite impressive. Yeah, very excited of how the laser part of this printer works. Now we do have one more tool to try out, which is this CNC. And I think this might be the more advanced as far as setting it up because it could be dangerous because we got a sharp spinning blade on here. So let's go ahead and take this head off and we'll put the CNC on. Go ahead and plug that in. So they did include two tips. We got these little protectors over them. We can see one of them is quite aggressive here and the other one is more fine. So I think to start off, I'm gonna use this one here because it would make more sense as more a finer point and we don't have to go in as deep if we didn't want to. And so installing it is quite simple. There's a little set screw right here that we're gonna loosen. Now you probably wanna leave the protector on so you don't cut yourself. But yeah, the tip will simply go in there and then the set screw will tighten up and hold it in there. All right, then we can remove this and we should be good to go. So I do have a couple pieces of this pressed wood here. So I'm not sure if this is ideal, but we're gonna try it out. And so we need to somehow install it onto this bed. And the way we're gonna do it is with these brackets here. And there's four of them. So using the extra long bolts we have, we're gonna go through the bracket and then choose which hole we want. I'm gonna go farthest away here. And that's gonna give us clamping onto our wood piece here that we're trying to engrave into. So it's probably best to get closest as you can to the wood. And then we'll just kind of go off to the side like this. That makes more sense, I think. So the whole idea here is we're gonna secure the wood to the plate. Now be careful with this sharp end. I probably should have left the protector on there because I kind of did slice myself already on the finger a bit. So this thing's probably good to be on there until you actually use it. All right, so let's power on the machine. Let's go to controls. Okay, so we have laser CNC on and off. So looks like it's the same screen we had before. So let's go ahead and test out if this thing spins up by turning it on and sure enough it spun up okay we'll turn it off now again we're going to do the same thing is we're going to center the blade right in the middle of the build plate because when we slice it this is where it's going to start so but before we do anything else let's go ahead and go to the computer and slice a cnc file all right so let's go back into snapmaker and we'll go to the cnc part we can see that it's pretty much looking like the laser or at least the layout so again, I'm not too familiar with this, but let's go here and just get this sample called CNC cut sign. We'll load it and there we can see it. So it's really small. So let's go ahead and scale it up a bit. I'm not sure how big, maybe about this big. That looks more reasonable. So since we're happy with this, we'll click on process. So on the top, we can choose the kind of blade we'll be using. So I guess we'll be using this first one, the V bit, probably the easiest one to use. And we also have the flat type if we wanted to use that. So here under configurations, choose the carve path. The target depth, which is one millimeter right now, so we'll keep it at that. And then step down 0.5. Not sure exactly what that means. It might go, maybe that means that after one millimeter, it will go another 0.5. Jog height and stop height. Okay, so when it's moving around, it's one millimeter above. And then when it's done, it will move up 10 millimeters. And so here we have the working parameters. We can adjust the speed. So it looks like it's pretty basic overall. So let's go ahead and generate the G code. So after we generate it, we can export it and then save the file. And then we'll move this file to the thumb drive and then into the machine. So yeah, overall looks pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and try this out. All right, so now that we got our file into the USB thumb drive, let's go ahead and power it on. So I'm gonna do the same thing we did for the lasers. We're gonna go to controls here. Then we're gonna set our origin to the middle of our project. Wherever we want it to carve is where we're gonna put our tip down to. So we can go into jog mode and then adjust it to where we need it. So yeah, right now we're just trying to find the center. So I think that's pretty close right there. Now I'm not too exactly sure where to start, but I'm guessing you get your blade really close to the wood. So let's go down. So we do have our gauge here. It says also for CNC. So I'm gonna go to more incremental. Okay, I'm starting to feel. So right here. So that should do it right there. And technically we can start our engraving. So let's go back. Then click on files and we can see here our CNC test. Let's click on that and then start and it should start up. Let's see what happens. 
All right, something's happening. Okay, move the bit. Okay, so for some reason, it's quite a bit higher than it needs to be. Okay, so I did something wrong. Let's go ahead and cancel that. I think the thing I forgot to do is set the origin, so let's redo that again. I'm gonna get it centered. All right, and that's it. So I'm gonna hit set origin. I think this is the part that I forgot to do. So let's try it again, see what happens this time. Okay, so it worked that time. So we can see that it's engraving into the wood. So now it's going a little deeper into the engravement. So I first kind of did a light cut, now it's going a deeper cut. All right, and it looks like it's finished. So we can't really see much because we got a lot of dust there. So I got a vacuum here. Let's go ahead and vacuum the dust up. And now we can see the engravement a lot better. So let's go ahead and cut it loose. And by the way, guys, I did these clamps all wrong. Let me show you really quick how it's supposed to be. So you're supposed to use one bolt on the corner here. And the bolt should be level with whatever you're cutting into. And then this goes on top of the bolt. And then another bolt clamps it down. So this is the correct way of doing it. Just like that. And then when you're done, you can just loosen it. And it's quite easy to take it off. So, All right, and this is what it looks like. It's a little bit hard to see the cut, but it's a very, very nice, high quality cut. So yeah, as you guys see that this machine here is quite capable of doing the multi-functions without no issue at all. So as you can see, it's a pretty good machine that does the three different functions quite well. It can be really fun for a hobbyist or someone that just wants to prototype on the side, maybe some engineering and things like that. So it's really cool how you have three different tools to work with.